good morning children welcome to our next class in last class you learned about the types of reproduction in plants and there are two different types asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction and whereas the flower seeds and buds are participating that's known as sexual reproduction and the different parts of male parts and female parts how fertilization takes place and how the ovaries turn into fruit and ovules turn into seeds those all we discussed and asexual reproduction also you learned some ways of asexual reproduction like a spore formation binary fission in amoeba and multiple fission in uh, uh, plasmodium and also budding process in hydra those all you had seen and in today's class you are going to learn about vegetative propagation vegetative propagation means except flower bud and seeds other than these parts the remaining parts of the plant like stem roots leaves these parts are going to give rise to the new plants that process known as vegetative propagation so the plants which are arising the new plants they resembles like the parent plants and the variations are very less in vegetative propagation and also only one parent is participating in vegetative propagation so only one parent plant is participating in vegetative propagation and the offspring are the new plants they resemble like their parent plant no variations occur in vegetative propagation so there are different ways of vegetative propagation naturally vegetative propagation takes place and also vegetative propagation can be done by artificial methods so now one by one we'll see what are the artificial vegetative propagation methods and that the first one is cutting cutting of the stem the stem which is having axial axial buds axial buds means these axial buds help for the growth of the stem so the stem part which have more leaves and axial leaf part so that stem has to select for cutting and it should cut at the base of the stem the twig from where it is arising from main stem so near to the stem part it has to cut and then separately sown in the soil it has it should have axial buds and leaves also should have the stem which you are going to cut should have more leaves and axial buds axial buds the means they give rise for the leaves new leaves so in stem cutting at the axil vegetative buds axil at the end of the stem axil point vegetative buds are present so these vegetative buds are helping to give rise to the new leaves or that in some plants new roots also arise from the vegetative buds so when you are going for cutting of any plant if you want to grow that plant by cutting you should see that the vegetative buds should present on that stem and it should have more leaves and take a cut near the node node means you know from where the leaf part leaf is arising that part is known as node so take a cut near the node uh, and it should have an axil bud and it should also have some leaves then cut it and separately sow in the moist soil so that it can give rise to a new plant and mostly ever known a very known fact that is many of us growing money plants in this way only uh, rose plants can grow by cutting process and uh, 
hibiscus can grow by cutting process and you can see in the cactus plant also can grow by cutting method whichever the cactus you want to grow first you choose that cactus plant and you just uh, cut the part where you are going to uh, select so let that cutted part should dry and then the remained part where you are cutting that should shown in the soil again back so this is the process of vegetative propagation and by cutting method many plants can grow and now we will see some more methods in vegetative propagation artificial methods of vegetative propagation when you see the potato when you keep potatoes in moist and darker places uh, the new plants can grow on potato if you want you can do this activity in your home uh, the potatoes will have some scars on their um, on their top of their skin scars uh, these scars only known as these scars only known as eyes the scars part is known as eyes wherever the scar is there near that uh, a new plant can have. like that it can give rise to the new plants so they sh those should be uh, stored in a cool area and dry conditions should be around it then we can avoid the giving rise of new plants suppose if you want to plant if you want to get new plants from your potato then you can grow in uh, warm and moisture areas you, you can keep your potatoes and after getting this new leaves or a new plant on the eyes of the potato then this should sown in the soil separately again then the new plants can go, grow from this eyes or scars of the potato the same way and why this swollen part is the swollen part of the potato is it storing the food so this stored food is also helping the growing plant in the same way in ginger also in ginger also a stored food is present in the ginger and this part which is give, giving rise to the which the part which is giving rise to the new plant called as rhizome so near the rhizome part Uh, a new plant arises when it is in the moisture and the warm areas uh, so when you want to grow a ginger plant in our home uh, just you can keep this part in the soil just dig out the soil and put this rhizome in the soil and cover with soil again we can get the ginger plant so these are some of the ways in reproduction vegetative reproduction same way we can grow the bananas too even banana i uh, have some chrome on their uh, outer peel so wherever the chrome is there whenever it is exposed to the moisture and warm areas the climate is warm and uh, moisture if available then immediately from the chrome the new baby plant can grow so this can be Uh, sown in the soil separately cut it this chrome part and can grow into new uh, banana plant and this is stored stem the stored stem in onion uh, so this stored stem stem also can give rise to the new plants this is known as bulb of onion so this onion bulb is able to give rise to the new plants when it is uh, sown in the moisture areas or when it is sown in the soil it can give rise to the new plants so these all are the examples for vegetative propagation and uh, this all the stems are looking swollen because they are storing the food at the time of germination they are providing food for the seedling and whereas in the sexual reproduction the parts of the seed when you see the cotyledons are providing food for the growing plant 
whereas in the reproductive reproductive uh, reproduction by the vegetative process the stored food is helping uh, for baby plant to supply the food and uh, more even when they are sown in the soil automatically they take the nutrients and water from the soil but instead before uh, sowing in the soil itself they can give rise to the new plant that is by using the food stored in their stem same way in the ginger same way in potato banana and uh, onion these all are growing new plants in banana by chrome in banana in onion by bulb and in uh, ginger by rhizome and in potato by ice the new plants can arise so this is one type of reproduction vegetative reproduction taking place in plants and now one more method when you see this is called as layering method layering means when the plant mother plant is growing uh, some branches of the mother plant will bend towards the ground and when it is bending towards the ground the area where it is touching to the ground uh, then from this twig the roots root parts get developed and it starts growing into an independent life that is natural vegetative vegetative propagation but in artificial vegetative propagation wantedly we will grow the new plant we will separate the new plant from the mother plant how we will separate means uh, we will choose the uh, stem or the twig which is healthy and just we will little bend that stem not separately immediately we should not separate from the mother plant after choosing the healthy twig healthy stem then where it is the stem which is near to the ground that we should select after selecting that stem we should little bend towards the soil and then without breaking that we should cover this bent twig with soil then we should water the plant regularly if wherever in any vegetative propagation compulsory after removing this comb from the banana and when you are sowing in the soil you we need to take care of it we should provide water and proper care should be given to them even in the ice of potato when we want to grow after sowing in the soil we must not leave that plant we should supply the water regularly and even in at cutting time after the cutting and sowing in the another pot we you should uh, give water supply every day and observe the growth of cutted stem so in layering children the branch which is near to the ground can bend and uh, cover with the soil so the branch which is near to the ground when it is bent and covered with soil the bent part and covered part will give rise to the root system and whenever it gets separate root system then it start doing an independent life it can take the water minerals and everything from their own roots and can lead into a new plant a new life so by this way in jasmine plants we are growing by layering method so that uh, n number of plants can be grown by layering method and when we see the bryophyllum in bryophyllum plant new plants arises from the uh, leaf margins these are called leaf margins so leaf margins give rise to the new plants they they are also known as notches these notches are the areas where the new plants arises and whenever uh, this new plant is detached from the notch and then they fall in the soil and can lead into independent life and uh, 
act as a new plant. So in this process, vegetative propagation is taking place in bryophyllum. And the next method when you see, this is called as grafting method. Grafting method means one part of the plant is tied on another part of the plant which have roots. So in simple way if you want to know, uh, the plant which is having very small flowers, small fruits. But you want the flowers should be very big and the fruit should be very big. That is your desired character. So you will choose the another plant which is uh, uh, able to give the big flowers. Okay. So this plant, this plant part which is giving big flower, that part, you will cut this main plant which is having small flowers with roots. On this, you make a V-shaped cut and you will insert the other part of the plant into this V-shaped cut. And both of them like this. This is one part of a plant. This is the another part of the plant which is having roots. So the plant which have the roots called as stalk. And the plant which we are tying, the other part of the plant which we are tying known as sion. So sion is tied to the stalk with a, tightly with a polythene cover wrapped and uh, waxed, tightly get waxed. So then both get merges. This graft, uh, the part which is grafting on the stalk plant, the sion which is attaching to the stalk plant. After tying, both of them merges and later the new plant which arises shows both the characters, both parent characters, which have small leaves, which have small flowers and which have very big flowers, which have small fruits and which have very big fruits, able to give very big fruits. So the new plant after grafting, the new plant which arises shows both the characters of parent plant. So it can give rise even to the big flowers and big fruit. It can introduce into the plants which we are grafting. So mango, goa, we are growing in grafting method. So if we want very big fruit in goa, we can take that charactered plant and we can uh, graft into the other plant which have small fruit and red color seeds if we want in green color fruit plant we can go for grafting and can produce in that way. So these are the different methods in vegetative propagation children. And now we will see the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation, only one parent is participating and there is no need of flowers, buds and uh, uh, seeds. And the other one is, there is no need of any fusion, no gametes are participating like uh, male gametes like pollen grains and female gametes like egg. They are not at all participating in this process. No fusion and no fertilization takes place in vegetative propagation. And the plants which are arising exactly resemble like the parent plant. So these all are the advantages by vegetative propagation. So the disadvantages in vegetative propagation is uh, overcrowding may be. It takes n number of plants may
Now when we see the disadvantages in vegetative propagation, overcrowding is the main problem because the baby plants or the new plants which are arising may fall in the soil at the same place and they are all in a group, in a crowd they will grow and they have competition for food, light and space. That's the one advantage. And there is no chance for the new varieties. Variations cannot occur. All the time the baby plant or the new plants resemble like their parents. What are the characters? What are the disadvantages? What are the disorders parents have? Uh, the plants also will have the same characters, same disadvantages. So, no variations takes place in vegetative propagation. And the other one is, and the last one is, uh, the plants which are arising, the new plants which are arising by vegetative propagation, uh, they cannot adopt the new environmental changes because they have the genetic material carried from their parent plant so they may not adapt to the new environment changes. So one thing is overcrowding is one problem and the second one is no variations takes place and the third one is uh, the plants which are arising by vegetative propagation cannot withstand for the environmental changes. Understood children? So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation. So, here you can do an activity, uh, grow the plants like potato, onion and ginger in your home and write the preparation for this. How to grow these plants by vegetative propagation, how it's taking place in potato, ginger and onion bulb, you explain in your notebook children. So in today's uh, potatoes and in banana, onion bulb, how the vegetative propagation takes place, you understood and you also see in the layering of jasmine plant and in bryophyllum how the new plants are rising and how the grafting method is helping to produce the new plants, you understood very well. Okay children, so you do the activity and grow the new potato plant, ginger plant and onion bulb and write the procedure for that.